welcome to the casting couch. We all gotta start somewhere. <laughs> Actually, this is uh, an episode of Night at the Theater. Yes, it's we just it's just current movie view, current movie vlogs, and tonight we went to go see Judge Dread, or Man. rather Dread. Yes, yes. There's an extra D because it's it, we saw the 3D one, so it's Dread. No, three Ds. His name is. It, Oh, is it like his name originally had two D's at the end of it? I'm making yeah. a joke. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were just being horribly inaccurate. But yeah, this movie was the shit. Oh, yeah. oh my god, it was the best remake of the Raid Redemption I've ever seen, and the best sequel to Doom I've ever seen, even yeah. though it wasn't. But yeah, I, I have to say, I liked Carl Urban in this one. I'm not always his biggest. Band. I sometimes find him a little on the bland side, but in this one, the blandness kind of helped because Judge Dredd is very much just a very... He's a faceless hero, let's put it that way. Yeah, he's he, that's another great thing about this movie. He never freaking takes his goddamn helmet off, yeah. not like in the first one. Although, I was kind of expecting Stallone to at least make a cameo somewhere. That, yeah. did, that did not happen. I, I, I completely understand why they, why they didn't. I mean, like, this movie, you can tell they're distancing themselves from the original as much as possible. Yeah. And, and as funny as the original one was, and as how rub shiitery it was. It's because it was a 90s flick, whereas yeah. this is a little more serious. Yeah, a lot of the times back in the 90s, the, the, the movies, the action movies... They had were to have some up. element of wacky. They were, they were played up more for the comedy, yeah. but th this, this was for the audience who doesn't like Rob Schneider. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. But yeah, quick breakdown. Like, th there might be a few spoilers in this, just FYI. So from well, yeah. this point on, if, yeah. you, if you don't want to get spoiled for the movie, I, I would... Dread what's ahead. Yes, just just sort of not watch it from here. But if you if you don't mind, then then whatever. The the story, thanks for the view count, anyways. The story revolves mostly around um, a drug it, bust. Yeah, it's a it, it's basically an overblown drug bust in an apartment building. I mean, a like two hundred story apartment building. Yeah, it's 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 funny because like it, it really is just an overblown version of something that really is just routine for a cop every single day. But and I, and I thought that was really smart, uh, smart. But but uh, the story revolves around Dread, and he's training this new recruit named Anderson. And um, unlike very very cute recruit. Yes, yes, she reminded me a lot of like Alice and Mac from Smallville. But um, yeah, she, like he he's training this new recruit. She's a she's basically the the judge equivalent of a. D student and it kind of shows through through the first two yeah. acts, but uh, she's got really powerful psychic abilities, which, which is, is apparently her only redeeming trait. Yeah, and well, other things as well. But uh, no, I mean like as far as the judges are concerned, yeah. that was her only redeeming trait. Yeah, the film, the, the 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 story of the of the of the film takes place in a post apocalyptic future that looks a lot like present day. But um, it's after Mega City One. It's after a nuclear holocaust, and they talk about mutants, even though there's no actual mutants shown in this movie other Bes than besides her. her. Yeah. Although I was thinking that would call for an X Men crossover, but they're different IPs. Yeah, they are. Um, but uh, it, it's just her first day on the job with Dread, and even though even though it is her first day on the job, and and that's very much a, a big plot point in the in the movie, it's not told from her perspective, and I like that. I was ex I was thinking to myself, oh God, please don't let this be told from her perspective, but it wasn't. It really wasn't, and despite some plot contrivances I had with some of the things, like it, it had action movie syndrome where the plot was kind of. I totally called like ninety percent of the stuff oh, yeah. that was going to happen. But well, you it, got well. Some of that uh, branches from seeing the original Dread movie, like the whole ID fail. That yeah. was called because we know Dread. Yeah, no. not just because of action movie. No, I know that, but there were a lot of times when they just said something, and I was like, ah, foreshadowing, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, if I had like to go on with the plot of the movie, they they basically. They go into the equivalent of apartment com of an apartment complex, but apparently apartment complexes are entire sectors in this city now because it's so damn huge. Yeah, and but, and it's it's called peach trees, which was a little odd. And it's not just apartments; they've got like stores and everything all across the first couple floors. Yeah, but um, basically they're going through this apartment, and as I said. It's very much like the Raid Redemption, it, it uh, the movie that recently came out. It's very much guys go in at the bottom level and they got a badass their way to the top. Pretty much. And it was a great big. What's the? T I can't even remember the term I was gonna use. It. It's like it's like one of those RPGs where you get where uh, 
they have like this extra dungeon where it's just a huge freaking tower and you gotta work your way to the top. It's Tartarus from Persona 3. Yeah, it's Tartarus. That's what I was thinking yeah. of. Thank you. Yeah. It's fucking Tartarus. Yeah. But with less demons and more yeah. wife beating wearing guys. Yeah. But um yeah. We're, Dredd and Anderson are going to this building, and they, it all begins with um, a murder where a bunch of guys are skinned and thrown off the side of the building, and they're thrown down, and they, they, they pick up on the murder, and they're going to investigate it, and they find this guy, and they find one of the guys, and because she's psychic, she's like, this is the guy who did it, this is the murderer, and this is, like, my biggest problem with this movie, it's my biggest nitpick with this movie, um... Dread asks her if she's certain that he's the that he's the that he's that the one he's who the pushed perp. him over. Yeah, and she says, "I'm ninety nine percent sure." And I'm like, "You're psychic. You just watched him do it from his own perspective inside of his head. You're a hundred percent sure. You just want this movie to continue." Especially since, and you and I were talking about this, they very explicitly state that she is the most powerful psychic they've ever discovered. Yeah, I mean, if they had Which said that. If, if, they had, if they had said her psychic powers had some sort of margin of error, I'd understand, but they never established that. They, as, they assume that she's perfectly masterful of her abilities, and as we see, she pretty much is. Yeah, she can pretty much control her abilities. She, has, she never has any problems controlling her abilities ever again. It's basically just a plot point to have a movie, because if they had arrested him right there, then... No, the, no thing is, the thing is, if she had said 100%, he would have shot him, and that would have been game. Yeah, it really would have been. They wouldn't have solved a big super mystery, and they would have walked out, and life would have continued. That's just, that's another thing. There's two, th two, thing, two reasons that this movie happened. One, Anderson getting paired up with Dredd, because she's the one who picked pe peach trees, because he said that there was only 6% of the puzzle of the crimes going on that they could respond to. And he told her to pick. So she said, okay, peach trees. Mm. And then second was the 99%. Yeah. If those two things had not happened, which there wasn't substantial evidence beyond random chance, then the movie wouldn't have happened. So yeah. it felt like they established the movie on very flimsy foundation. Yeah, there, but there are very, very good things of this movie. Like, on the whole, I did very much enjoy this oh, movie. Oh, yeah. Just, ba like, I, I thought that it was just, really, really fun. I just have to say something, because I didn't, I knew nothing walking into this movie. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a reboot of the first story, or if it was a new story. Thank God it was a new story. And secondly, I totally ignored the rating, but this movie is rated R. It's very gory. I wouldn't say, like, bewilder me amazingly so, but there are some moments... Where there's a lot of fucking faces exploding. Yeah, and that does go to the the slow mo scenes because there there's a drug yeah. in there called slow mo, and they they take them from these asthma inhalers, and I'm like, that's the best asthma ever. <laughs> but no, they they take them from this inhaler, and it yeah. makes time move at one percent its normal rate, and you'd know that from the trailers. But th the slow mo scenes are really really good. I mean, they're a little sparkly for my taste. It, but, it, uh, it kind of felt like the move. The, that was just a reason for them to use slow mo as in a way to impress yeah. easily, easily entranced audiences. It's it's bullet. It's time. like we get it. It's slow mo. Yeah, it's it's bullet time. It and is. To be honest, it really was. I really didn't. I didn't find slow mo to be all that believable. I mean, like when you're take when you're when you're taking something to get high, and I'm not speaking from experience or anything like that. But if you're taking something to get high, it should make you feel good. It shouldn't just slow time down. I mean, that's not. A high. That's just an effect. Like they, we could we could just say that it had other side effects. Like it's a narcotic, because that's what they call it. They we could assume there are other effects, but they never explicitly stated yeah. that slow mo did anything but slow you down. Yeah. So I don't see how that's a high. It's just hey, look what this does. Yeah. We can move slow. Pretty sparkly water, cause like a lot of these shots had either water or glass. So I'm guessing that just, like, you watch it just for, like, sparkly things. Yeah. Or things that reflect that reflect light. Yeah. But um, there are a bunch of really, really... Like, despite the fact that slow-mo isn't really that much of a believable plot device, and despite a lot of different things, um, this movie had a lot of really great things about it. Like, one of the few things that I did enjoy about Judge Anderson during the movie was there's a scene where she... At her first execution of a criminal, she goes to... She, goes to, she hides in an apartment, and she reads the woman's mind, and she said, and she realizes like, 
she has a husband and he's one of the criminals on the outside, but then she looks over at a picture and she sees that it's the, it's the guy that she executed. But I, I keep thinking to myself, again, you're a psychic. You should have known that. Had you, like, you were reading her mind from the, in, from the outside of the door. You yeah. really should have just, you should have known that you were knocking on the door of the wife of the guy that you killed. Well, we could file that under her being stressed about the guys coming. It's like she only, she only peered into her mind enough to learn a couple bits of information. Yeah. Like, we have to assume that when she peers into someone's mind, she only goes as far as she wants to. Mm, that's not really how psychic things work. This, most this of is time. fiction. Everyone has yeah. different interpretations yeah. of how psychic powers really work. Yeah, but yeah, if I have if one... we ask someone, that's probably what they would tell us. Yeah, if I have one problem with this movie, it really is Judge Anderson because. She goes through most of the movie being the fresh-faced sort of cop archetype to the counterbalance Judge Dredd's very seasoned, hard-hitting sort of ways. But at the very, like, again, she is very much a Judge D student. It, she barely, she didn't even pass her judge trials. She failed by 3%, so she's not even a D student. Although they don't really explain why, because she doesn't seem particularly unintelligent. No. She doesn't, and at the end she badasses her way through a bunch of things, because she does get captured about halfway through the movie, and at that point, instead of, instead of having the female judge, they replace her with sort of four more judges that, you know, Judge Steve, Judge Steve, Judge Joe Brown, and Judge Judy. Cause, so, cause there's, there's one female judge, and there's one black, and there's one, there's, there's another black judge in there, and they, they, they basically exist to run around and get killed. They don't do very much. In fact, there's actually one scene where the leader of them shoots Dredd through a wall, comes <coughs> around, and Dredd looks up at him and goes, wait. And he goes off on this big villain monologue about, you're the guy, you're the judge, and your first and your last words are, wait? Wait for what? And then, like, Anderson shoots him With through the back, and he's just like, wait for that, her to shoot you. That's another thing that bugged me. See... In, like in that scene, he had just been shot and he was bleeding and everything, and the guy and the rogue judge was about to kill him, and he stalls for time, somehow knowing that Anderson had escaped their capture and was about to save him. Yeah, I mean it's not like how the fuck did he know that? If she need, if he needed to like stall for time with that, why didn't she just shoot him like right off the bat? I'm, I'm just just so it stops bothering me, I'm going to assume that she was already standing there when he said wait, and but, they just didn't show us. But then why didn't she shoot him just right off the bat? Because we needed a villain monologue? And why him? Yeah. The rogue judges were not explained or explored in depth at all. It's just they showed up as the backup that was called in. They went right up to Ma. Oh, it turns out they're evil. Yeah, really. Hey, yeah. go hunt Dread. Oh, great. Now I don't know who's who because they're all looking the fucking same. And then he kills them all one by one, except for Anderson, who kills the female judge because it's funny to pair up the female with the female for some reason. Yeah, honestly, that one of the judges was a woman simply so that we could have someone to go after Anderson and have her be a woman. And it's not that as though... That felt really cheap. Yeah, and it's not as though she really had much of... Like, it, it's not as though her being a woman had any sort of purpose or anything like that. I mean, she... she it would have... The movie would have been exact same if Anderson was a male yeah. with psychic powers. Yeah. There she, was no difference. She literally... She wasn't even a love interest. Nope. But, um... Not. This this woman, she just... She says, I'll shoot her, and if she... And I'll, sh I'll either shoot her point blank or she'll hesitate, and then I'll shoot her because I'm wearing a judge uniform. And it's like, yeah. okay, she's got psychic powers. She's totally not going to hesitate. Thanks yeah. for the payoff for that. But at the very end, we have... See, that's the thing. She said she was going to shoot first. She did not shoot first. She told her to put her gun down. Yeah, this was so... not a female version of Han Solo. She really wasn't a female version of Han Solo. <laughs> that would have been much better. I, I, it just... The, the rogue judges were inconsistent, unexplored, and just... Their story was over in 20 minutes. Not Tops. even 20 minutes. Like, less was, than 20 minutes. That was more there than was 10. They were there to elongate the battle to the top. Yeah, they were filler. And in the end, like, Judge comes up for, like, you know, the climactic final battle between him and Mama. And he's got his gun trained on her, and she's got this transmitter, like, in her wrist. And it's and she says, oh, if I, if you shoot me and my heart stops beating, then I... The, the top 50 floors explode. Yeah, pretty much. And, like, millions of people will die. And he's just like, yeah... 
I don't believe you. And he shoots her right through, like, he shoots it, her. It's not that he didn't believe her. It's like, let's see if that thing has has 200 floor range. Yeah. So he drops her off the building in the, like, the, the building's shaped like a square. So there's this huge gap in the middle, which is how the first, the guys at the start of the yeah. movie were killed. It's so he's like, quad. so he's like, okay, let's see if it, let's see what the range is on this thing. So, and, and to make, and just to cap off the whole final encounter, he drugs her with her own slow-mo drug and drops her off the 200th floor. Yeah, in a parallel to what she did with the four skin guys that she threw off of the... Three. Like, the three skin guys that she threw off the building that began the whole ordeal in the first yeah. place, which was a nice touch. In terms of just the writing of this movie, a, it, it, it falls it falls victim to a lot of action movie problems. There's, like, there's a lot of one-liners, some yeah. hit, some miss. I you know what there weren't all that many one liners. Not that many, but the ones that were, I would say hit and miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like after he drops her and he dies or she dies, we we go back up to dread. Yeah, I'm like that's it. And at the very end, like you know, he tell he tells the judge commander that you know she's a pass and she can be a judge even, even though he took her badge from her. Yeah, well he took her he took her. We should explain about the past thing, because when she was, when Anderson was captured, the guy, the the prisoner, the Damon Dragon, up and down this fucking building, took her judge gun. I don't know what it's called. Uh, so he was gonna try and execute her with it, but of course, the, we all know anyone who's watched Dread knows that a non-judge can't use a gun. So when he tried to use it, it blew his fucking hand off. Yeah. So what the one of the things she was told at the start of her assessment was, you lose your gun, automatic fail. Yeah. So by this. The, that when that happened, Anderson was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna fail. Let's just get this fucking shit done, anyways." And yeah. she proves to be a person of very high moral fiber as she lets an innocent victim go. The computer geek who has been helping mom take o mama, as the villain is named, take over the building, lets him go. Uh, so Dread gets to see that she is a very fine moral character, and that's kind of when she badasses her way to the top. Am I the only one who thinks that Mom from Futurama was a better villain than Mama? Yeah. AKA yeah. Yeah. a more entertaining villain. A more entertaining villain at least. Yeah, at the very least. She was she was rather one dimensional. She was just kind of She was just violent. hard to look at. I mean I get it. She was queen of a drug ring. Yeah. And she definitely looked apart, but all in all she was boring. Yeah. And I, I even I, her death was boring. I feel like that actress does play really unlikable characters really well. I mean, she's yeah. kind of Cersei Lannister. Yeah, the fact that I'm so horrified by her means she played her character well. Yeah, indeed. But uh, yeah, on the whole, the movie um, visually incredible, fantastic, action packed. It's a fun you ride. That shit. It's a really fun ride, especially for people who did watch the original trilogy. Yeah. If you want, if you're gonna look at it critically like more crit like you know as critically as I would look at it because I was planning on doing this video like you know after after seeing the movie but um if you're gonna look at it if you're if you're willing to just not look at it as critically as you normally would like don't just turn your brain off and, and watch it like that's I don't I, I don't endorse that idea to any sort of to any sort of no. movie watcher, but if you can just sort of sit back and enjoy it just for the the visuals it's and the flaws action. don't take away from what's good about it, let's put no, it that way. No, of course not. I mean, it's got contrivances, but what movie doesn't? Yeah, any action movie does. Yeah. but uh, So as an action movie, fantastic. As an adaptation of Dread, fucking fantastic. As a, you know, piece of film literature, no, it's, it's not a piece of film literature. But it is a really great action movie. It's the best comic book movie I've seen in the past couple of years. Because I have my own... Better than Avengers? No, but non-Avengers <laughs> comic book movie. Because, okay. you know, that's kind of the culmination yeah. of a bunch of comic book movies. But as just a standalone comic book movie, it's, it's... It's really, really, really good. It's the best one that I've seen in a long time. I mean, Carl Urban does a lot better than he does in, you know, one of his last adaptation movies, you know, Doom. He does a lot better than he does in Doom. And I didn't even particularly hate him that much in Doom. But, um, yeah, you can see a lot of shades of his performance in that, and a lot of the things that I really liked about his performance in that, and I feel like yeah, he's a really good actor, it's a really good movie, you guys should totally go check it out. And, that being said, I'm Paul. I'm Yoshida. And we're signing out. We'll see you at the theater. Yes. <laughs>